Hey guys, Dan Takashi here. Over the past few days, we've seen big moves down, especially in European markets and US markets. Just in a span of few days, we saw European indices like the Eurostox 50 fall about 4%. In the US markets now, we're seeing the S&P and the Dow Jones just in the last couple of weeks down about 7%. However, what's weird about all this is you look at the Japanese markets, unbelievable they're barely moving they've barely gone down the back they're actually up over the last few weeks the topics and the nikkei they're both up i've been trading japanese markets for well over 10 years i've been watching these for a long time every single day uh doing a lot of different strategies i've not seen something like this in a long time and today i'm going to try to analyze to you why this is happening with japanese stocks specifically looking at not just the nikkei the topics but also the jazz deck the mothers and also the bank sector and why i still think that buying the bank sector in japan is probably a good idea so let's get started here for those of you new to my channel my name is Dan. I'm a former hedge fund guy, former Wall Street guy, traveled the world, came back to Tokyo, Japan, where I was born recently. Just started YouTube, started the Japanese channel in January this year, and then started the English channel just a few months ago in June this year. So hopefully you subscribe to my channel and follow me going forward. Today's theme I want to break down into three main topics. Number one, let's do a review. What the heck is going on? Why was there a big fall in the U.S. markets of the last couple of weeks caused by the tech route and the European bank stocks? And how do things look now? What's causing all this? And then number two, let's go into the charts again, as usual, especially looking at Japan. Let's go into the specifics here today. The Nikkei, the topics, also the Jasdaq, the Mothers and the Bank Index. Why are they not moving like this? What the heck is going on? What is the reason behind all of this? And then number three, for, uh, lastly but not least, my recommendation to you and your portfolio regarding Japanese stocks at the moment. So let's get started. As for, first and foremost, guys, it's always important to do a review. Where, I know the markets are very exciting. Everything's moving up and down. There's a lot of energy. But my biggest advice to you is whenever you look at the markets, first take a deep breath, make sure you eat enough food, make sure you get enough water, then try to look at what's happened so far first from a sort of a bigger picture before you dive right into the charts. This method has helped me psychologically and uh, business wise in a lot of ways, and hopefully it can be of some use to you. So my first method is first to sort of uh, take a step back and say, OK, what has happened so far? What's going on? So in the US market, we've seen the markets go down about 7.6% in the S&P and the Dow is down about uh, about 6.4% over the past few days. So the top was around September 2nd. And the big cause of this was for the most part, it's been the NASDAQ, right? The NASDAQ really has fallen the most and it's actually now recovered uh, a little bit more than the other ones over the last few days. So it was sort of a tech route. And we can see this if we look at the specific uh, uh etfs here that we've talked about before especially looking at qqq we saw that there was a big sell-off here followed by a big volume in the tech etf here probably the big reason why the markets fell in the u.s and not just tech but also a little bit in consumer discretionary as well we saw a notable volume and notable falling here and then the rest of the sectors they fell but not as much so it was really caused by the tech sector and then after that just two days ago we saw the fincen report and the fincen reports guys if you're not sure what i'm talking about please see my video from two days ago regarding the scandal the bank scandal uh and then the banks in the uk got hit a lot especially looking at hsbc and london uh if we zoom out here uh it got hit over the last couple of days in big volume and standard chartered and also we look at deutsche bank these three got hit the most especially deutsche bank fell about nine percent fell about two percent just in two days so quite a big fall regarding uh the fincen report that was released worldwide now these two areas have been hit the most tech and banks and this is what's been causing the short-term decline at the moment okay with this in mind now let's look 
at the Japanese market number two part of this video let's analyze the Japanese market and let's try to get an idea why the heck is this sucker not moving I keep saying sucker I don't know, it's a bad bad mouthing from my Wall Street days why the heck are the Japanese markets not moving here it's very very interesting right the topics has barely moved the topics has, and the Nikkei has barely moved not only that the charts the charts are kind of squiggling around here I mean it's showing a little bit of a sell signal in the Nikkei here a little bit but I'm a little bit ambivalent to believe this because it's going in and out in and out I mean it's just it's not a clear trend to me at the moment uh, topics on the other hand we're seeing the MACD here eh, it's a little bit more pretty it's still in an increase in trend at the moment guys again if you don't know what I'm talking about MACD RSI Bollinger Band the basics of investing please see my below videos in the description area uh, description area it'll probably be a better use of your time so looking at this stuff here yeah I mean so far the topics is still in an increasing trend this RSI is just notching up here uh stochastics is showing a nice trend up the bollinger band it's actually pretty thin at the moment it's not that big uh topics and the nikkei showing that the volatility is very low which is is interesting as european markets and u.s markets are moving like crazy japanese markets are not moving at all and we can sort of see this more specifically uh looking at correlation here so looking at correlation we can see here uh the usually the chart part in the red showing the correlation and right now we're using the basis the dow jones in the u.s usually the dow jones and the nikkei move pretty similarly together pretty similarly but right now we're seeing the actually if you use the dow jones as the basis here uh and then you compare it with let's say the topics the correlation is actually a little bit negative it's just super interesting the nikkei also a little bit negative very interesting yes i know that this takes into account there are a few days where the markets were closed in japan but do note that even with today's performance it's still negative and you see your past a few months it hasn't been negative in a long time and what's more interesting is if you look at stuff like the Jasdaq or the mothers in Japan these are also negative and these have been showing a very strong performance up guys for those of a review mothers and Nasdaq these are more primarily related to a bit mid cap smaller cap companies especially startups a little bit smaller companies tech a little bit more tech heavyweight and what's interesting to me is that these things they've just gone straight up MACD looks beautiful here right and the jazz stack here MACD looks beautiful RSI looks beautiful stochastics look beautiful everything looks beautiful and the mothers right very similar chart everything looks beautiful and this is so interesting to me the fact that these are going straight up and historically these have had a little bit more higher correlation with the Nasdaq but recently the Nasdaq's been going down yet Jasdaq and mothers are just notching up they don't seem to be caring whatsoever very very interesting and why is all this happening why why is the correlation so low I'm showing you the numbers and you're saying okay they're not really correlated they're not really moving together but why Dan why in my opinion it's most likely two reasons number one as I've talked about before I think what we're seeing is called a decoupling rotation this basically means that I think investors are selling some of their stocks in markets that have uh, already rebounded a lot since coronavirus especially in the U.S. markets uh, we're seeing the tech sector they've rebounded a lot so I think that in my I think uh, again this is just my conjecture we're seeing investors sell in big tech heavyweight stocks like the Nasdaq right and I think that they're selling out of the Nasdaq and they're putting money to work into other markets uh, maybe a little bit into Europe but it seems like it's more a little bit into Asia at the moment and especially in Japan it seems like money is being put used to Japan so I think that's the first reason and then the second reason in my opinion I actually think it's due to positioning now positioning here what I want to show you is a chart right now of the Nikkei uh, looking at the Nikkei positioning on what's called the CME exchange now this is the exchange for the Chicago Mercantile Exchange of the Nikkei futures I used to trade these all the time almost every single day uh, it's like it's like a distant cousin to me that we have a bad relationship sometimes <laughs> so anyways looking at this positioning right now here uh, we're seeing that this positioning overall this is reported every week in my opinion it's a little bit low especially recently this positioning does change all the time no nope, but on a based on a one-year basis actually the positioning is actually a little bit low during coronavirus shock yes of course it got very very low uh you know in March and whatnot but in March and June it was very very low but 
it's still pretty low at the moment. It's kind of, it's still, it's not very high. And I think that this means that investors around the world are underweight. It's not just the macro funds. They're usually the people who trade the futures are macro funds. I think it's macro funds, but it's also stock investors around the world are underweight Japanese stocks and they're buying Japanese stocks right now. And this may be due to the new prime minister coming in. It may be just due to the fact that there's just simply rotation going on because there's been strong performance in one sector and they're just rotating out of another. But who knows? Whatever Whatever the reason is it seems to me that's probably a combination of the numbers taking money out of a one-year performance that's very high 35 percent let's say in nasdaq and rotating it into other places like let's say japan especially the topics index is only up 1.73 percent based on one year and maybe investors are avoiding a little bit of let's say china due to the tensions going on and they're avoiding europe a little bit right now because the banks are you know they're in trouble or they're in a potential another uh, round of new regulations so it sounds like there's probably rotation going on i think that's the reason why this is happening and i don't see any reason why this is gonna not continue there's a lot of strength being shown here and i don't think that this is going to end anytime soon Okay, so last part of my video, number three, what do I think you should do with your money, your portfolio going forward? Simply put, I don't see any reason to really panic with these Japanese banks. What's especially interesting to me is the fact that, so I used to do what's called arbitrage. And arbitrage is basically meaning looking for mispricings between two different securities. Now, uh, one of my arbitrage strategies, a very basic one, was to take a look at, let's say, the Dow Jones and seeing how it moves and trying to predict how, let's say, the Nikkei moves. Now, for example, you see, we see here the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Just in the last couple of days, this has been down uh, roughly about, let's see here. 1.7%, 1.88%, something like that. It's been down just over the last couple of days, right? So while Japan was closed for two days, this was down almost 2%. So technically, Japan should have opened down about 2% on the day, but it didn't today. It did not. And not only did not open down 2%, but it ended up, the Nikkei ended up today, a small positive. So Japan was on a holiday. Usually it reacts to the movement in the U.S. markets and the dollar yen. Uh, recently, it's not really been moving with the dollar yen. It's been moving a lot more with U.S. US markets. But this time it didn't even react to the U.S. markets. So Japan's showing a lot of strength. When a market is showing strength, you buy. When a market shows weakness, you sell. And right now, I believe that I continue to recommend these Japanese banks i've been recommending 1615 which is the japanese bank etf it follows the japanese banks topics index uh not completely 100 percent, but it usually follows it so today it was down only 1.3 percent today the topics banks index and this is after the u.s banks xlf was down over the last two days while japan was closed this thing was down let's see here quite a big amount almost four percent yet the topics banks were only down 1.3 a lot of strength and especially my favorite continues to be this stock that i've been saying i said this on tv the other day uh mitsubishi ufj this has been my favorite it was only down 0.34 percent today that's incredible the dow was down almost two percent and japanese bank 8306 down only 0.34 percent that's very strong now, I do note that the MACD is starting to turn a little bit here. It's showing a little bit of wariness. So you may want to trim a little bit of positions in Japanese banks, maybe sell one third, but I wouldn't sell any more than that because right now it's showing strength. So sell one third, show a little bit of discipline in your positions. Again, this is for a short term position and continue to see what happens. But this is a strong chart, especially 8306. It's bottomed since, uh, it, since it's bottoming in Corona. It hasn't actually uh, rebounded that much compared to its peers, such as 8316 Sumitomo Mitsui or 8411, which is Mizuho, which has actually rebounded a lot more. So it's been my favorite so far, 8306. I think that this continues to be a good buy, but given the fact that the MACD has turned a little bit right now, uh, even, we don't know whether this is right or not, but we want to respect the signal and we want to stay disciplined. So sell one third of Japanese banks, but continue to hold on to the rest and see what happens that's my recommendation for now as always guys stay hedged 
and investing is self-responsibility. At the end of the day, I do recommend markets are a little bit volatile right now, so you wanna stay hedged. I continue to recommend hedging with, let's say, QQQ in the US market and in the Japanese market if you wanna hedge, maybe sell something like 1306, which is the Topics Bank's ET, uh, sorry, the Topics ETF overall. This is just a general hedge with the overall market. And guys, do know, investing is self-responsibility. I'm one YouTuber, so please take this with a grain of salt. At the end of the day, you got to make your own judgments. I don't get everything right. I don't get everything wrong either, but you got to make your own decisions. So thanks again for watching my video, guys. I appreciate uh, your comments. Please continue to send me your comments. I am reading your comments every single day. I'm pressing like. I can't answer everybody's comments, but I am reading them. Looking forward to topics that you want to hear. I'm thinking about talking about uh, gold and silver tomorrow because they've had a big move. Uh, but let me know, guys, if you want to hear anything else. Thanks so much, guys, for watching my video. Have a great week. Take care. Adios, amigos. Thanks again, guys.